There's a custom in the, the church that at Easter the Christians would greet each other with a saying, the Lord is risen. And the response being, he is risen indeed. The inspiration for this greeting can be found in the moment when the two disciples who encountered Jesus on the road to Emmaus returned to Jerusalem to report their encounter with the risen Lord. And they told the apostles, the apostles responded by saying, yes, it is true. The Lord has risen indeed and he's appeared to Simon. This saying really captures the Easter joy of the disciples on Easter Sunday evening and expresses the joyful faith of all Christians, especially at this time when we celebrate the great feast of Easter. The resurrection of Christ to a new and glorious mode of life is the single most important element to our Christian faith. And indeed, the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. It means that death is not the end to human existence. The resurrection of Christ is in fact the foretaste of our own destiny. St Paul declares but Christ has in fact been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. The resurrection of Christ then is a promise of our own resurrection. And this single truth shapes everything about our lives. Because we live now in the expectation of being raised to a new and glorious life. So, the, so faith in the resurrection is very particular perspective to the way in which we live. Because we do know that our death will be followed by a moment of judgment. We will stand before God. We must render an account of our lives with our final destiny in the balance, heaven or hell. And so this impels us to strive for goodness and holiness of life. And confidence in life after death also enables us to bear with the burdens and sufferings that we may encounter in life. Christians aren't fatalistic, but we firmly believe that good can come out of the trials of life, provided that we accept them trusting in God and allow them to be drawn, to draw us into the mystery of redemption. When we proclaim that Jesus has truly risen from the dead, we embrace a life inspired by this proclamation. And this faith has revolutionised the, the lives not only of individual believers, but has laid the foundations of many cultures like our own. It underpins Western civilization. However, it's also true that this Christian culture that we have inherited is now under the grip of forces that are completely alien to Christianity and are actively seeking to eliminate the Christian influence in our society. And we find that Christians are being more and more marginalised. We are in the process of being crushed by laws that prevent us from simply being who we are, especially in the work of our various institutions. One such cultural force we can call technically, if you like, philosophical postmodernism. What this, this is, is, is the denial of the existence of objective and verifiable truth. In effect, it establishes that there is no authority beyond 
the views and attitudes of the individual self. And thus the notion that there is a moral code by which we humans should live is repudiated. This dangerous ideology which has captured the minds of so many, particularly the young, sees reality simply as a political construct and moral living really as meaningless. What's happened is the mind becomes closed, closed to truth, and the conscience is suppressed. They cannot see evident moral truth, like the injunction of the Decalogue, thou shalt not kill. So it's such a mentality that sees women sadly demand the right to abort the child in their womb. The second cultural force that we can identify is often described as cultural Marxism. It offers a promise, really, of a false paradise. It promotes antagonism and conflict as a means to achieve its goals. It, it seeks to foster and manufacture division, us against them, on the basis of some grievance. It focuses on perceived lack of equality or opportunity and encourages a victim mentality. And it ferments discontent and fosters social revolution. It promotes division and class warfare. It needs discontent to justify its existence. And it's not about advancing the good, but seeking the breakdown of social harmony. And it recognises no higher authority or truth. It's about the raw exercise of power and control over the lives of citizens. Its expression in actual communist governments is there for all to see. And it strives for a complete subjection of people and the rule in an absolute authoritarian manner. These two forces now so dominant in academia and among large number of activists intersect to destroy the two social institutions preventing their complete control of society, the church and the family. In recent days, the Albanese government has sought to remove protections that ensure religious freedom in our society, especially in the conduct of our institutions like schools, hospitals and social services. And he threatens to work with the Greens to remove the right of faith-based services to operate according to their beliefs and tenets. This actually threatens the very existence of our institutions. It even threatens the freedom of priests like myself to preach the moral beliefs of the church at a mass like today. So we are facing a very real and existential threat to our freedom to be who we are as Christians. And this may, in fact, come to pass. Yet today, on Easter Sunday, we can declare to each other that the Lord is truly risen from the dead and that this event has, in fact, changed everything about human life, about its meaning, its purpose and its destiny. So we Christians always live in hope and we always live with the confidence of the final victory of truth over deception. The resurrected Christ, like this paschal candle, stands as a towering light in the midst of a darkness that envelops humanity and closes the mind because he is the ultimate victory. And in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are and always will be victorious. So despite all that disturbs us 
about the current direction of our society. We declare today with joy and confidence the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed.